Hi everyone. Welcome back to learning about winter. So today we're going to read about a weather predictor. Someone who's going to tell us whether winter is going to stick around for six more weeks or whether we're going to have an early spring. And they actually have a groundhog named Phil in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, who for 134 years has been predicting whether we're going to have a long winter or a short winter at the beginning of February. So this is about a different groundhog and his name is Jeffrey. So Jeffrey Groundhog predicts the weather. And this is by Bruce Kozalon Nick. Yeah, that's quite a last name. One morning after a long winter's nap, Jeffrey Groundhog popped out of his burrow to look for his shadow. It was February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Jeffrey remembered what his mother had told him. If you see your shadow on Groundhog Day, go back to sleep because winter will last six more weeks. If there's no shadow, spring will be here soon. So groundhogs live underground in what they call a burrow. Jeffrey hurried into town to tell the newspaper that he had not seen his shadow. So, no shadow, and spring is almost here. Is that it? Asked Merton Moose, who works at the newspaper. And the story ran in that afternoon's Daily Gazette. Daily Gazette, Groundhog says no shadow, spring has sprung. And so he said at approximately 8 a.m., Jeffrey Groundhog popped out of his burrow and did not see his shadow. Jeffrey says the sky was cloudy and there were no shadows, so spring is on its way. Well, within a few days, the weather turned warm. The snow melted and the ground thawed. Spring had truly sprung. Predicting the weather is easy, said Jeffrey. So here they're having a spring tea. And everyone is out of their winter coats. Well, the following winter, Jeffrey dozed snug as a bug, dreaming groundhog dreams in his warm nest at the bottom of his burrow. Toward the end of January, folks started looking for clues as to what Jeffrey might predict. So here's Merton Moose at the newspaper, and he's answering the phones, are ringing and ringing and ringing, and he's going, no, Mrs. Hen, you'll have to wait until February 2nd for Jeffrey's forecast. Yes, Mr. Duck, we'll let everyone know if Jeffrey sees his shadow. So everyone's getting a little impatient. Well, as Groundhog drew near, television cameras and lights were moved into place around Jeffrey's burrow. This year, everyone would be able to watch the biggest groundhoggiest groundhog day ever. And so this is what it looks like in town. They have spectacular groundhog day sale, big, big groundhog day special, rock bottom prices, one week only, local groundhog TV star. Oh my goodness. They're making a big deal about this. And it's all over town. Jeffrey's handsome picture has popping up all over town. Here it is for toothpaste. Here it is for sunglasses. Here it is for bubble bath. Here it is for jogging shoes. Here's the newspaper. Say, read it in the Gazette. The, new, uh, the TV says, watch for Jeffrey. It's on the buses and it says, Jeffrey's breakfast drink. Oh, holy moly, Jeffrey's really popular and he's still asleep. Bright and early on Groundhog Day morning, everyone waited 
for Jeffrey. Look at this. Well, one hour passed, and then two hours passed, and then three hours passed, yet still no Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey? Hello? Jeffrey? called Merton. Are you home? Jeffrey, are you down there? Oh, no. I've overslept, groaned Jeffrey. And he flew out of his bed and he dashed to his door. <gasps> and he made his appearance, but oh, my goodness, look at this. Oh, what? Oh, no. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, called Merlin. What'd you see? Was there a shadow? Uh, I don't know, cried Jeffrey. With all the cameras and lights and, and everybody crowding around, I could hardly see the ground in front of me, much less my shadow. So the newspaper prints, Je Groundhog doesn't have a clue. I don't know what I saw, said Jeffrey. Was there a shadow? Weather picture muddled. Oh no, Jeffrey couldn't tell because there was there were too many people and lights flashing on him and, and all these people making noise and he couldn't see. So now things were really up in the air weather-wise. Nobody knew whether to bring out the golf clubs or the snow shovel. No one knew whether to wax the skis or the surfboard. And no one had a clue whether to plug in an electric fan or the electric blanket. All the weather reports were canceled. So what are they going to do? What if they take out the golf clubs and it's snowing? What if they have the snow shovel and the flowers are blooming? What if they go to go surfing and the water's frozen? No one knows what to do. And it says, no weather reports until Jeffrey makes up his mind. Jeffrey, this is causing major problems, muttered Merton. We need your, protect, your prediction now. Oh, all right, moaned Jeffrey. I'll have my answer by this afternoon. So, late afternoon, extra, extra. Jeffrey says winter, six more weeks. It's official. Put spring wear in the mothballs. So, there it is, lots of snow still. So, Jeffrey, how could you predict the winter was, would last six more weeks? Asked Rebecca Raccoon. No one was really certain if there was a shadow or not. Did you guess? Mm, no, said Jeffrey. Did you study? How weather works? asked Sunny Squirrel. Nope, said Jeffrey. To be honest, I called my mom. On Groundhog Day, she always looks for her shadow too. Whew, sighed Jeffrey. Predicting the weather is very tiring. I'd better get back to my nest for a nap. And that is exactly what he did. And we're going to have six more weeks of winter also.